This paper is about speculations on the future of the hybrid identity of patrilineal Judaism through the lens of Rachel Weintraub, a character in Dan Simmons' science fiction novels Hyperion and The Fall of Hyperion. Rachel's father, Saul Weintraub, is a member of a troop of pilgrims in a distant future seeking out the Shrike, a mythical, monstrous creature that may grant wishes to a chosen few. As Saul searches for the Shrike to cure an unusual time sickness Rachel contracted on the creature's planet Hyperion, he comes to learn he is seeking help from the very person he is trying to save. A series of events that defy a linear timeline result in Rachel and the Shrike existing as one hybrid creature. Rachel embodies hybridity through her merging with the Shrike and her identity as a patrilineal Jew. Hyperion initially presents hybrids like Rachel Weintraub as monstrous threats, but ultimately creates a future in which hybrids are necessary for the survival of humanity, inviting the reader to re-examine exclusionary and essentialist forms of identity construction. Patrilineal Judaism is a contested identity. Though the Reformed Jewish community recognizes patrilineal Jews as Jewish, more conservative branches of Judaism that follow traditional Jewish teachings do not consider patrilineal Jews to be Jewish. They believe in the matrilineal principle, the passing of Jewish identity from mother to child. In a binary approach to identity, a person cannot be half Jewish. They are either Jewish or not Jewish, Gentile, and patrilineal Jews have no claim to a Jewish identity, even if they self-identify as Jewish. The shift to include patrilineal Jews in Reform Judaism occurred in 1985, so it was still a relatively new phenomenon when Hyperion was published in 1989. In the novel, which takes place around the year 2800, Rachel asks her father, am I a Jew? And he responds, if you want to be. However, Rachel's mother, Sarai, is not Jewish. This patrilineal identification is important in Hyperion, as hybrids are presented as monstrous threats to the hegemony, the interplanetary human civilization of Hyperion. And though Rachel's monstrosity as a hybrid may initially be metaphorical as she navigates the border between Jewish and not Jewish, it takes literal form when she merges with the Shrike, a monstrous creature engineered by the Technocore, the hegemony's supporting system of artificial intelligence to destroy humanity. Saul is called upon by God to sacrifice Rachel throughout the novel in a parallel to the biblical story of Abraham's almost sacrifice of Isaac, tying her fate to a predetermined ending. It is important to note that the story of Abraham predates the adoption of the matrilineal principle in the second century. Simmons' comparison to this story highlights Rachel's connection to the Jewish community by comparing her family to the biblical founding family of Judaism, while still presenting Rachel as fated to be expelled from her family and community. As a scholar dedicated to what he calls the Abraham problem, Saul has determined that a God who demands the sacrifices of children is not a God who should be obeyed and tries to refuse the call. However, due to the nonlinear nature of time in the novel, the sacrifice has already occurred. The death by time sickness that Saul feared is avoided when Rachel merges with the Shrike, but she loses her name, her life with her family, and her relationship to her father, all of her connections to an already contentious Jewish identity, in order to begin an isolated life of monstrous hybridity. Hyperion and the Fall of Hyperion, though categorized as science fiction, exhibit tropes usually associated with medieval fantasy inviting comparisons between Rachel's hybridity and depictions of medieval fantasy monsters. The plot of Hyperion includes the frame of a fantastic quest in a retelling of the Canterbury Tales, the presence of godlike mythical figures, and hybrid monsters. In Saracens, Demons, and Jews, Deborah Higgs Strickland chronicles the medieval artistic legacy of Jews depicted as fantastic hybrid monsters in Christian manuscripts. They are depicted in manuscripts as animalistic and demonic, not quite human and not quite other, not quite white and not quite black, balancing on a tremulous border between coexistence and violent expulsion. When Rachel transforms into the Shrike, she develops protruding spikes, sharp teeth, and red eyes, traits applied to illustrations of Jews in medieval manuscripts, 
carrying the artistic legacy of monstrous fantasy hybrids into the 29th century. The exclusionary othering imagery of the distant past is continued into the distant future. In Hyperion, those who cannot be easily labeled or identified, or who do not fit in with the hegemony's definition of humanity, are considered dangerous and incompatible with civilization. Some of these outsiders, specifically non-humans, are destroyed as part of the process of colonization. However, there is a place in the hegemony where those who do not fit into neat classifications coexist, the titular planet of Hyperion. Rachel joins these outsiders as an archaeological researcher, at home on Hyperion even before she merges with the Shrike. Rachel's half-Jewishness is not particularly noteworthy when she is surrounded by Shrike cultists, surgically modified settlers, interstellar pilgrims, criminals, and scientists who have come to study the strange planet's time anomalies. Many of those in the hegemony dismiss Hyperion as an uncivilized planet, but Hyperion's residents find joy in their freedom. Hyperion is a communal example of the self-abjected deject described by Julia Kristeva in Powers of Horror, that unwilling other made willing through the jouissance of the impossible third option beyond inclusion and exclusion. The planet of Hyperion can be seen as the deject's pseudo-object, a false goal and yet a place of happiness in its implication of inclusion through exclusion and belonging through straying. Though cut off from the luxuries provided by the Technocore, in terms of inclusion and the ability to forge one's own identity, Hyperion appears utopic. Though Rachel's merge with the Shrike may seem to have her acting in league with the very Technocore that threatens this utopia at the edge of the hegemony, it is actually the key to saving humanity and Rachel's ability to determine her own identity. Though Saul initially refuses to sacrifice his daughter, it is Rachel herself who chooses the identity of the monstrous hybrid and willingly sacrifices herself to merge with the Shrike in the fall of Hyperion as a means to control and eventually destroy it. She does not do this to protect the hegemony, but as an agent of the ousters, humans who live outside the hegemony and who have condemned it as a dangerous remnant of a colonial past incompatible with diverse interplanetary life. The hegemony is destroyed along with the Shrike and the Technocore. This choice to embrace hybridity eventually reconnects her with her father, a symbolic return to the Jewish community. Acceptance of the patrilineal Jew by her community affirms the claim to a Jewish identity and the exclusionary practices of a long-destroyed Earth's conservative views on Judaism are irrelevant in Hyperion. The lack of a completely cohesive Jewish community does not result in the lack of characters with a Jewish identity. With her task complete, Rachel and Saul choose to live with the ousters who coexist with interplanetary intelligent life through adaptation and the purposeful adoption of hybridity. If the survivors of the hegemony's destruction want to continue surviving, they must be willing to adapt too. The genre of science fiction often involves imagining futures in the form of dystopias and utopias based on projections of present concerns, either their perpetuation or the end of the identified anxiety. On the 2017 podcast, Jew 2, a patrilineal Jewish woman says that she hopes for a future where there are no question marks in our minds, one in which she does not have to wonder at her decision to self-identify as Jewish. In Hyperion, there may have been a question mark when Rachel asks Saul, am I a Jew? But the utopic change is that Rachel is the only one who can answer it. Though it initially seems to be endorsing exclusionary identity construction through the monstrosity of hybrids, Hyperion and the fall of Hyperion ultimately conclude that it is actually monstrous to exclude, deny, and eliminate hybridity. And though this could be read as a journey that ends in the acceptance of hybrid individuals, it is important to remember that in Hyperion, time is not linear. It is not even cyclical. The genre of science fiction blends the present into the future and reimagines the present as the past. Hyperion and the fall of Hyperion invite the audience to imagine that future where there are no question marks for patrilineal Jews a science fiction future that holds a mirror to a reimagined, more inclusive present. <laughs>